Hi everybody, it's Sandra. In this video, we're going to take a look at my Coro jewelry collection, at least a portion of it. I do have more than this. The name of my channel, of course, is the Funky Pickle Thrifter, and the reason for that is because I buy jewelry and other stuff, too, to sell for a profit, sometimes to keep. As you can see, I am definitely a collector as well as a seller. But I get my items at thrift stores and yard sales. That's where I got everything here. Everything here is clearly marked Coro. So we're going to talk a little bit about Coro and we'll just have a look at some of their very, very beautiful pieces. Thanks as always for joining me today. Please hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Let me know what your favorite piece is. And if anybody is interested in buying anything and you have a reasonable offer, please send it to me at IamTheFunkyPickle at gmail.com. All right, let's get started. Here's a beautiful metal flower. These were very, very big in the 1960s, right into the 1970s also. This is a metal flower. It's not quite a flower power, but it is pretty cool. I have kind of never seen another metal flower by Coro before. Isn't that lovely? I love the rich colors. I really love brooches, and I have quite a few Coro brooches in here. Now, Coro started signing their jewelry, Coro, in 1943. The company existed from 1901 to 1979. Now, the two founders of the company are Cohn and Rosenberger, so they just shortened that up and named their company Coro. I actually love this. Look at the texture on the petals. How interesting. You will also notice, as I say often with pieces that are designer signed they don't lose their gold you know look at that just really made very very nicely quality company for sure I think this one is a Coro it's very very hard to read the signature but it's a knockout in any event we'll take a look right here I think that says Coro craft um I don't know is it grosse Hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure if anybody knows, uh, tell me, but sometimes with these old brooches, that glue that is used to, to put the rhinestones in, keep the rhinestones in, starts to yellow off through the years. So that's why some of these are a little bit yellow. I don't really see any problematic stone. Well, maybe that one is just slightly, but look at the height on that. What a beautiful piece this is. I love that one. It's always so great when you find pieces in their original boxes. Look at this awesome Pegasus Coro box. It's in very nice condition, too. These are really nice earrings. It looks like these have maybe never even been worn. Aren't those sweet? I love those. Those are screwbacks, I believe. I got these both at the same yard sale. Now, this one has a little bit of a problem, unfortunately. And it's just too bad, but it's missing its little dangling pearl, which probably wouldn't be a big deal to fix, but I just really love these boxes. I love this kind of fuzzy, felty stuff in here. Beautifully displayed, right? And right in their original boxes. Oh, I have a price tag, too, somewhere. Let me see if I can dig that out. Isn't this a cool item to have? I'm really happy I have this. I got this... Um, Gosh, I can't remember now. I think it was in with a bunch of other jewelry that I got in the lot. That's really cute. I wish I knew what it originally came on. Pegasus Coro. Great paper tag. So Emmanuel Cohn, the co-founder of Coro, actually died in 1910. But they kept the name Coro and Rosenberger, like I said, until 1943. The other partner... Carl Rosenberger died in 1957, and his son took over the company. This was a yard sale find, and it's, it's kind of a bummer because it was only a couple of dollars, and this one is sterling, uh, but unfortunately, this glass has a scratch on it. Isn't that too bad? And it's pretty noticeable, too, which really is a shame. I'm sure somebody has the know-how to like grind that down. I don't, but I really love this. I think it's so creative to have this um, 
this rectangle flower. I just think it's very, very interesting. I also think it's elegant the way it's long with those long leaves and it really does look so much like solid gold. Of course, this is called vermeil, which is when they put gold over sterling. A little bit of chipping there. It looks like somebody really enjoyed this one a lot. And I bet you that scratch has a story to tell. Like many of their contemporaries, they had their factory in Providence, Rhode Island. I have really been meaning to drive to Providence one of these weekends and take a look at the, the jewelry museum there. I think it's still opened. I don't know. I think they may have closed for a while, um, but I definitely want to check that out. I would love to see some of this old stuff. Oh, that one is missing a rhinestone. That's too bad. I think this one is actually quite lovely. It looks a little bit like a trafari. Um, oh, it's missing a couple of stones. Oh, that's a shame, but I probably have some old stones I can stick in there. I think that's a very, very interesting design. So Alfred Katz was not actually one of their top designers, but he did sign a lot of the patents. A lot of people do say that he designed jewelry for them, but he didn't. He worked for the company in a different capacity. And I love these. I love how different they are. This one is gold tone, but it's sort of a matte mixed with the shiny. You know, the, the tips of the flower petals here are shiny. And this one is so cool, too. Same kind of thing, a matte silver finish with the shiny. And this one has a stem and a leaf. So I think these are very, very interesting. Look at all that layering. Really nice quality pieces. I think this is pretty early Coro. Isn't this pretty? Now this part here is like jo jointed. I don't know what you call that other than jointed. I think there's a word for it. I actually think I know the word, <laughs> but I can't think of it right now. You know how that goes. I really love these colors. These are very sweet. And where is the signature? Oh, there it is, of course. Coro, right there. That's a great color blue. Here's another early one. This one is from the 1940s, V for Victory. This kind of stuff was a very, very big theme in jewelry in the 1940s, of course. I think this is very creative. It's like three bunches of grapes. And I think this one's very, very interesting. This one's in very nice condition, right? No missing pearls. Fake pearls, of course. Here are two very stylish, chunky, chunky bracelets. I think this one's very, very nicely made. Look at that. And I believe this is a Pegasus Coro. Yes. You can date all of these. I mean, you just need to Google jewelry marks, Coro or something. Um, I know I've done it before, but I can't remember any of them. And, uh, I was too lazy to look it up <laughs> again. But anyway, um, I love these chunky bracelets. These are very, very stylish. This one too. Really a nice, some nice statement bracelets. Okay, that one's like kind of laying funny. There it goes. And let's see if this is also a Pegasus. Nope. Just the copyright uh, symbol and coral. Again, they look so real. Beautifully, beautifully made pieces. This is a very interesting necklace. This is kind of high fashion for its day. I don't know if those are supposed to be pineapples. I'm not exactly sure, but this is very, very nicely constructed. What a great necklace this is. This reminds me of a Sarah Coventry, uh, but it is marked Coro. I mean, unless somebody switched this out, I don't know. But this one's really, really lovely. So nicely made. This would lay so nice on the neck because of the way that it's constructed. Look at the condition on this. This was a thrift store find, maybe from three or four years ago. It is marked Sterling right there. And it says Coro. Let's see if we can get it. Um, yeah, it's just upside down. That's all. Uh, yeah, Coro, there it is, of course. How interesting is this? I guess copper plating on the sterling. I'm thinking these are uh, baskets or something. Not sure, not sure. But I think this one's very mod. 
I really like this one. You know, a lot of their stuff sort of has a mod vibe. It almost looks like outer space or something. Here's quite a non-traditional flower brooch. Look at the way these petals are bent over. That's very cool. There's the mark. Again, with this very interesting texture. It just kind of gives it some depth, I think. Here's another interesting take on a flower. Folded petals. And I think that's a Pegasus Coro. Is that a, yeah, it looks like it. Wonderful textures, wonderful brooch. And these have nice weight to them too. These aren't just thin, cheap pieces of jewelry. They're very substantial. Of course, bows are always a big motif in jewelry for, gosh, uh, 160 years or something or longer. And this one actually does have a little bit of the gold uh, rubbing off right there. Still very interesting. I like the cutout. I think this one's neat. Here's a screaming 60s set. I got these at a yard sale last summer. I was going to sell them, and then I, I did what I do sometimes. I, I fell in love. I think I can get this out. Who else loves daisy jewelry? I really, really do. And I have this whole kind of perure here. Well, let's see if they go together. They, they may not. But let's take a look at this. Wow, what? How interesting. Look at the gold tone with the flowers on there and then the daisies on top of that. So let's have a look at the signature here. Where are you? Oh, is this not a Coro? What's occurring? Hold on, let me look. I can't find a signature on this. Maybe this is not Coro. Huh, that's a mistake I don't usually make. I'm a little bit surprised at myself, but I bought these together. I bought this and this. Hmm. Is this one not marked either? Okay, what have I done? Okay, that one's not marked. <laughs> Face very red. Look how cute these are. No, you're not marked. Okay. Uh, I sure hope the earrings are. Hopefully these say Coro. And they don't excessive craft. Okay. <laughs> well, this is still an adorable sweet. Come on. Pretty awesome. Just not Coro. All right. Pardon me. Sorry about that. Let's continue on. A lot of times when we're dating jewelry, we have to really look at clues. I mean, I guess it's a little bit easier now or a lot easier with the internet because you might be able to find this exact thing and the patent and the drawing and the whole thing. But in this case, if we didn't have any of that, we would take a look at these crystals right here, which are Aurora Borealis. And we know that those started being made in either 55 or 57. I think the jury is out on that, but somewhere in the mid 50s, we'll say. Now, the other little clue we have right here is this J hook. So according to Coro's history, the J hook began being used in 1948. So this couldn't be older than 48. I mean, we knew that anyway because of the ABs, but just saying. This is a lovely one too. This one looks very starbursty. This is an awesome necklace. Here's another very imaginative flower brooch. What a little weirdling this is. So this one is marked Coro Craft. It's just another name brand. I don't know if it was kind of a higher end thing or not. But why don't we just take a look at Wikipedia and what they have to say about Coro. The Coro Costume Jewelry Company started doing business in 1901, producing jewelry under several brand names, including Coro Craft. Some of the more notable products include the Coro Duets, Coro Tremblers, Coro Door Knockers, and Coro Crown Pins. The Coro Company went out of business in 1979. Now, because I am buying stuff at yard sales and thrift stores, uh, I don't have any of those. I love Coro Duets. I love the Tremblers. I love, I love everything about all of those things. But, you know, I don't have such a kind of highfalutin collection because 
I'm buying my stuff on the cheap for 25 cents or 50 cents or what have you. Still cool stuff, though. I hope to find a duet one day in the wild, or maybe I'll just treat myself and get one online. Now, the other thing that Wikipedia says is they opened their factory in 1929 in Providence, and it be they became the largest manufacturer of costume jewelry in the world. So there's a cool little factoid. This one's interesting, too. Look at how it sort of like swirls around. Very stylized. This one's really sweet. I love this white enameling, but there is glue, <laughs> you know, all over the place on this. So a little bit of yellowing, that's to be expected. But there's our J hook. So like we said, we know that this cannot predate 1948. I just love the construction of their pieces. And I think I'm also going to be doing a Trafari show too at some point. So stay tuned for that if you're a Trafari person. When I get very high-end stuff, uh, like Trafari, for example, I usually sell that right away. Um, I did just sell a brooch for $1,000 a few months ago. Oh, what's going on? What's going on with that? That's something, something, something. But I think this J-hook probably... Hmm, that's odd. I think that doesn't belong in there. That was probably just in somebody's jewelry box. Really very, very sweet little flower necklace, though. These earrings are kind of crazy. Look at that. That's called a stamen, I think, right? But how interesting is that? All different color rhinestones I'm missing, too, I think. And these are marked Coro Craft. Those are cool. Does anybody wear clip-on earrings anymore? I do occasionally. And there's a way to like loosen these up and make them a little bit more comfortable too. But these are, are odd, I think, in a very cool way. This one is kind of odd too. Is it a plant? Is it a flower? Is it a heart? A stylized heart? Hmm. Lots of depth on this one. And there's our Pegasus Coro. I think that's Pegasus, right? Yeah, it looks like the shape of it. It's kind of worn away with age. Again, with that texture, love it. I really love these earrings. These are plastic, so they're nice and light and comfortable. How interesting. I like the color, too, on this, that sort of powder blue. I think they designed these earrings to look like the real deal. Wow, are these nicely made. Look at those facets. These must be foil-backed, right? Yeah, of course they are. So they would foil back stones just so that they would look a little more glistening in the light. So the light goes in and then it reflects back out when it hits the foil. These are lovely. Look at the cut down here. That's interesting. Looks like a star or something. These are very fancy. I think this poor thing is one of the oldest pieces of Koro I have. It is sterling too, Coro Craft sterling. Unfortunately, it has so many missing stones and stuff, and there's some discoloration there. The enameling on the leaves is actually not that bad, and I think this is very interesting. But, um, yeah, it's just seen better days. I wasn't quite sure what to do. I found it at a yard sale for, like, a dollar or something, and I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't not get it for that price. But yeah, it, it's not in great condition. I think somebody could probably bring this back to life, though. Someone with the know-how. Nice oldie. I always love snowflake pins like this. That's just sort of the nickname. A lot of people call them that. It could also be called, I guess, a star starburst kind of a thing, too. These rhinestones have really held up very beautifully. Now, like a lot of other jewelry companies of their day, they did kind of farm out some of their jewelry. So sometimes they would have another company make their jewelry and then just put their stamp on it. I believe Sarah Coventry never made their own jewelry. Sarah Coventry only farmed out their manufacturing of their jewelry. But Coro did a little bit of their own and a little bit of putting it out and having someone else do it. Look at the condition on this. And look at this link. 
what in the world is that link called? Very interesting and creative. Let's see where our mark is here. There it is, Coro. Is it Sterling or anything? Uh, nope. Pegasus Coro. And does this one also? Mm hmm. I wonder if somebody just put that on there. That's interesting. What an awesome charm bracelet, though. I always like charm bracelets when they just have the one. Like, there's your statement. I'm just going to have this one swirly, cool 1950s charm on this very interesting link. It's in terrific condition. These are cool. Great yellow stones, but that movement, that would look really, really great worn at night. And there's the signature right there. I love this color rhinestone. How about this awesome necklace? That same wonderful color. This one's very cool. It's very adjustable, so you could wear it as tight around your neck, you know, as you want. Even the back looks nice. Nice height. Good condition. This one I have seen before. This is kind of a, a more common one. I guess it was a big seller. I think that is supposed to be looking like a tulip. There's our Pegasus Coro mark. How pretty. I love these big, gigantic stones. Beautiful with the AB coating. Another unusual design. This one is interesting. I've never seen this one before. I really like that sort of faux um, onyx and the faux pearl prong set. Look how nice. And there's our signature, Coro Craft. That one is very cool. Here are two different pairs of earrings. I love purple jewelry. This has the lighter purple color. They're screw backs, a little bit aware to the gold tone. Those are interesting. And then these have the darker purple. These are interesting too. Three square stones with the one clear prong set, except for not the clear. I think that one's glued in. Yeah. Interesting, right? And there's a different signature on that one. These are cool. I really like these. So I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but this back is like a clip, but it's also a screw back because it does both. So you can screw this um, in or out just to make a different adjustment for the size of your earlobe. Just yet another sign of quality jewelry made by a quality company. These earrings are interesting. Really nice big rhinestones, screw backs. It's kind of cool the way it has this little sort of thing on the bottom, like a, a ribbon tie or something. Let's take a look at yet another pair of rhinestone earrings. These are cool, too. These have that snowflake thing, a little bit of a Sputnik thing, maybe like a space age look to them. A little bit of yellowing on that stone. There's a signature, and it also says Pat Penned right there. Who knows if that is for the piece or for the back? I don't know. Yet more really nicely made items. All prong set stones. Look at that. Lovely. Here's the last of my collection for today. Love this color blue. And are these not signed? Hmm. Okay. I think these are tulips, right? Or something very stylized for sure. So, uh, oh, there it is, Coro. Okay. I was just going to say, sometimes pieces may be marked uh, or, or unmarked, but something else from the set is marked. So this is a set, it goes together. Isn't that sweet? 
there it is, Coro. Well, thank you so very much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed looking at part of my Coro jewelry collection. Don't forget to let me know which one is your favorite. And I really, truly thank you so much. I hope to see you soon, everybody. Bye-bye.